All right. Well, we are at 10 o'clock. So um, I will start with the angel messages and then we'll get started with the coffee. If, if This is going to be recorded so that you can listen to it later. So if you don't mind just uh, muting for the time being while we're uh, going through this part so that if you, people have to come back and listen, they can hear okay. So welcome everybody to Online Coffee with Devin. I'm so grateful all of you are here. I'm so grateful for this round table discussion we will be having about our intuition, how we work with the light, how we connect with the angels and sharing experiences with each other. My main purpose in creating this online coffee was so we'd have a place to come together and share what we're going through because not everybody has a group at their feet to sit and visit with about these kinds of things. Plus, it's just so validating to hear that other people are having the same experiences or similar experiences, and they're using their intuitive abilities the same way we are. So it really is meant to be a support group for us all to learn together, grow together, share our experiences, because as you will see in some of the angel messages that are coming up for today, there are a lot, the overarching theme for today was balance. Now, when I ask for these messages from the angels that I'm about to share with you, first of all, I always set the intention that these messages be for whoever hears them at the time they hear them. I do ask that it be for the you know, next month or so that we're looking at the, the guidance they're giving us to get us through to the next coffee. But don't forget that we have my private Facebook group, Coffee with Devin, if you want to ask questions in there and connect in there in between as well. I absolutely love hearing from you. If you are a light worker or love walker yourself, please post in there the work you're doing because we all learn and grow together. We can practice if you're just getting to know your own abilities, you can practice with each other in there. So I wanted to mention that as well, because going into these messages, it's important to keep this word balance in mind as we go through them. So again, I do always say a prayer of protection to make sure I'm connecting only with the highest vibrational beings and that these messages be meant for you at the time that you hear them. I will be recording these messages and this entire coffee thanks to the popular requests for those who aren't able to attend live for this, or they want to go back and listen, I will be posting the recording soon and all the normal outlets, YouTube newsletter, everything. So just make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, or you have signed up for my free newsletter, devindoer.com. If you're hearing this later, so you get all the notifications for that and know that, you know, that's the thing of, that's wonderful about working with this is whether you're hearing these messages now or at a later date, just pay attention to that and write down what resonates with you. Try not to focus too much um, on what it means. Just notice what resonates. And then you can come back and use that amazing tool of hindsight to see kind of what other messages were coming through for you. I like to say, as you're listening to these to notice the first thing that comes to mind. If you're hearing a message about a relationship or a project, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Often that is exactly the guidance that you are receiving a message about. So the first message, like I said, that came through was the overall arching energy that and where we want to keep the key word we want to keep in mind as we listen to these messages is balance, because that's something we're going to be needing to bring into our energy and our day to day routines over the next month for sure. And the first message was we really need to focus, we need to find ways to bring opposing energies and push them in a single direction. I know that sounds really hard to understand. How am I supposed to take two total opposites and make them go towards the same direction? And so I actually asked the angels for an example of this. I said, can you give me something that I can share? What do you mean take opposing energies and push them in a single direction? And they showed me an image of having two grandmas You've got the grandma that's the maternal grandmother the, from the mother's side, and you've got the grandma from the paternal side, the dad's mother, and they have totally different personalities, but they both really, really, really want attention from their grandkid, or they want to be with their grandkid, or they want as much time to contribute to the experience and memories with the grandkid, and they have totally different personalities, so you're trying to find a way that that your child, let's say it's your child in this example, 
can experience both grandmas and have equally close relationships. Maybe one lives really far away, one lives next door. <laughs> um, well, the, what they're showing me is, first of all, you notice what they're really talented at and where you, you could use their help as well. And you would say, you know, maybe the maternal grandmother who's closer by could help you with a lot more of your daily help, your routines, picking up from school, taking to school, taking to different play dates or parties. And maybe the grandma that lives far away or is more about the moment and sitting and relaxing, she's the one that comes and takes the kid, grandkids for the weekend so you and your husband or partner can get a break. So that was the example they were showing me is that you can have your grandchild or your child have equally close relationships with both grandparents even when they seem to be going in different directions, but you're you're encouraging them to come towards the single point of direction, which is having an amazing close relationship with their grandkid and also helping you at the same time, creating peace and harmony with the family so there's not conflict between it all. So that was the message they were showing me for that. I thought that was really fun and just you know, something to keep in mind as we go through this next month, you are going to see sort of polar opposite energies coming your in your direction. And you have the tools to find compromise, find cooperation. And it's really all going to be about about balance. So they want you to know that you have time to do this. So keep that in mind as well. Sometimes we feel like we have to fix it right away. And the guidance here was to wait for the perfect time to say something or wait for the perfect time to offer. Maybe you're the grandparent that's far away and you're waiting for the right time to offer to come down and take the kids for the weekend. We are coming into this sun in Libra very soon. And for those of you who don't follow astrology, that's all about balance. We're going to be really focusing about on balance. So it doesn't surprise me at all that that was the overarching theme for these messages when I was connecting with the angels for the energy. And they said this energy will allow you to retreat a little bit. They said, we they know that things have been kind of hectic for us. We've seen a lot of hectic news lines. Things have just been harsh, right? Especially in August and leading up through now. And they said, one of the ways we can handle this is really bringing balance to our thoughts. And then they wanted to bring in another keyword, the keyword of separation. And that means that we're going to have to separate ourselves from some of these energies and that we've seen a lot of emotional excess around us, maybe even ourselves, we've had some emotional excess, just kind of things flying out of our mouths before we really thought through that. That's okay. The energy is with that now. Again, if you follow astrology, Mars is in Gemini, Mercury is in retrograde. So that things, those things happen. And the guidance here was don't be hard on yourself about that. If, if you have let things spill out of your mouth that you've kind of felt bad about later, have some compassion for yourself. This is the energy. We are all feeling this right now, but go ahead and take some time to separate yourself from that energy. And they were telling us to be really careful that we don't get stuck in an illusion with our material world. So they want us to create structure for ourselves to bring this balance in. And this does mean what you hear me say, like a broken record, bringing in your spiritual routine into your daily practice. What are you doing every day to help yourself remain in alignment with the energy, remain in alignment with the angels and the guidance we're getting, get yourself centered. Now they are going to give us some guidance on that, but be thinking about that. What are you doing every day to help you help you maintain balance? And when we have energy fly at us or some of our energy flies out of our mouth that we kind of regret, what are we doing to bring ourselves back to a place of calm, grounding centeredness? Because the advice here is to, we're going to really need to create a clear channel for ourselves. What do I mean by clear channel? I mean, being able to get your body and mind really calm and grounded so that you can receive divine guidance. So do what it takes to bring balance to your thoughts and to your physical body. I know for myself, I try to work, get my exercise in, in the mornings before I sit down to work, because that really grounds me and it gets off a lot of that excess energy. I tend to prefer moving meditations, So I'll get a lot of guidance on my walks or during yoga or doing something like journaling, any kind of movement where I'm kind of distracting my physical body, but then I can usually sit down and just do a traditional meditation and get still and things are a lot more clear for us. So where can you create space 
in your daily routine and in your home to revitalize that daily routine. And so if you already have a place that you sit down and, and meditate there, is there something you could shift there to make it more clear? I'm showing, you know, cleaning it, maybe just moving things around just to move the energy around. And I'm also showing that some of us may need to add spaces in our home. Maybe the place you've been meditating, it's not quite working. Is there another corner of your home you could go sit or maybe a spot outside? Maybe there's a park down the road you could go to more often. So create a clear channel for yourself um, as you're trying to find balance as we go through. Because what they said that's coming up for us in the near future is that we really are gonna overcome a lot of the challenges we've been facing. And we really have to focus on using our will the force of strong will, and you will persevere. So keep that in mind. This is what they were telling me. You know, this is not fear-based at all, but think of it as good versus evil, dark versus light, love versus fear. We will overcome the things we do not want. We will overcome with love. And so whatever it is that we're finding challenging, whatever it is that's causing us to release a lot of energy a little too quickly or other people to release it on us, we need to persevere and trust that the angels have our back. We are winning. Love is winning and love ultimately always wins. So trust in that as we face some things coming up, other people who are not paying attention to the energy, they're just reacting instead of responding. And we're, you know, having to feel the brunt of that. How can you separate yourself from that and bring balance? So again, the final message they wanted to bring for us, I like to always have an intention. What can you do right now? to start activating this energy of balance, separation, have a strategy with your daily routine. And they're asking you to count your blessings, go write down three or more things you are grateful for in your physical world right now. And they were very specific about this. They don't want us to say to be super ethereal with us. They want us to get physical with our physical environment. So not um, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for love. I'm grateful for God and the angels. That's wonderful. You can add that to your list, but they want at least three things that's in your physical environment. So, you know, I, it would be as little as me saying, I'm grateful for my favorite crystal right here. So <laughs> they do want you to do that because that's going to really help us as we're going through this energy going forward. And we're being asked to separate ourselves. They're asking us to caution ourselves with emotional spending or emotional release of things, maybe purging too quickly. And so that's why they're asking us to take stock of what do you already have in your home, in your meditation space, in within reach physically that you are grateful for. And that's going to attract more of that security and more of that balance. And how can you reuse those things? Because we're in this Mercury retrograde, we're doing things with RE. Can you reorganize or reuse or recycle things and make your space for meditation, for your daily routines, even better so that you have that strategy of separation and bring balance. So I hope that was helpful for everybody here. I want to make sure we have time to get to everybody that is here today live and may have a question. I have one quick announcement here. If you haven't had the opportunity, my free five-day journaling challenge is now available to sign up if you are a newsletter subscriber, when it was first released, we had a little error where if you were already a subscriber, it wasn't letting you join because it thought you already did it. We fixed that. So if you go check the most recent newsletter, that is a new link that will allow you to sign up. You can start anytime you want. It's meant, The messages are meant to come to you when you start. The angels know when you're going to do this. And it just takes five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon. It's designed to teach you how to start creating your book of evidence. I created a free PDF workbook that has uh, things from my journal I released in March, my physical journal, but this is a digital one that you can either type in or you can print and write in because I'm just trying to get you to see the structure with this and see the way that we can get a message in the morning, go about our day, and then at the end of the day, use hindsight and go, wow, I see how that message applied. But I also am challenging you to do it five days in a row if you can, to see the overarching message that's coming through for there. So if you are doing that challenge, I'd love to hear how it's going for you. And I also wanted to bring up a question I have from another coffee member that I thought was phenomenal. I'm going to keep the name private, but this is a really good thing that we could all share about in a round table discussion. And this is how do you deal 
what is your go-to, what are your go-to tools, I should say, for releasing anger? So when they were talking about earlier, you know, maybe we've felt angry in the moment and let some things out or somebody else's, you know, shouted at us or said something in a tactless way. And then we feel offended by that. What are the things that you're doing to release that anger so that we're not holding on to it and, you know, allowing it to manifest into something physical, like a headache or a backache or something bigger. So again, two things, if you don't have a question or if you don't want to participate, you don't have to, but that's what, how I'd like to lead the discussion. Are you doing the journaling journaling challenge? If you are, how's it going? And also, you know, if you, how are you releasing anger? How are you, if you feel anger over something, you know, what is it that, how do you handle it? And I can kind of start that off by saying, you know, anger is usually, um, you know, you can take, break down most emotions down to either love or fear. And a lot of times it's, fear over us letting a loved one down, fear over something being worse than it actually is that brings anger. And anger can be a beneficial tool sometimes to get things done, to make things change. It can be a motivator, but we don't want to hold on to it. We want to be able to use it in the best way and then release it. So that's why the angels are always giving us that message about don't react, respond. So for me, when I feel anger and I will say my personality, and you could probably see this in my astrology chart. If you follow astrology, I'm more of a slow burn. I don't usually realize I'm angry. If I shout, like if I get mad and I'm like, pick up your shoes, I've asked you three times to my kids. That's happened a lot. Um, I'm not that mad. It's, it's just like a momentary burst. If it's a, if it, Usually the deeper anger that needs the work, the stuff that I really need to release and make sure I'm not holding on to, it's more of a slow burn for me. So think about that for yourself as to when did you immediately feel anger? And then what tool do you use to release that? Or was it something that you realized over a few days? You know what? I'm really angry about what that person said to me. I'm that really hurt. Um, so I'm telling you for my tool first, just to keep the conversation going, and then we'll start moving through. For me, it is first identifying the, the root emotion there, you know, is it, am I angry because somebody I loved was hurt and I'm defensive of them, or am I angry because I'm fearful of something else from that, you know, fearful that I let someone down, fearful, I didn't do enough, fearful that I could have done more and I didn't. So kind of breaking the emotion down can be really helpful with helping you understand how to release it. And then you can decide what's the best tool is the best tool to have a conversation with this person, or maybe not. Is it maybe to just write a letter and never send it? Or is it to have a, a conversation with a trusted friend that's not involved in the dispute who can hold space for you? And they're not going to point the finger and tell you what you should do. So that's how I kind of wanted to start that. And I want to make sure we get to everybody. So I'll just go through the line as I see you on the screen here. And I'm so grateful you're here. Thank you so much for always joining um, this event, the second Wednesday of every month, which I guess I need to see when the next one is. But check your calendars for October because it will be the second Wednesday and that will be our three year anniversary of these coffees. So I'm trying to think of something fun to do for that, uh, that coffee, since we will be celebrating three years of this. Okay. Moving on. I see Ruby on the screen first. Hi Ruby. I'm so glad you made it. You've Hi, been so busy. <laughs> How's uh, it going? Good, good. Uh, yeah. Like you mentioned, you know, just, just, I mean, like, Unfortunately, I think I ended up booking sessions on <laughs> the Wednesdays. So That's I guess uh, you know, at this time I was like, you know, I ensure I blocked it on the calendar. <laughs> so that <laughs> I get to see you all. So, um, so yeah, I mean, otherwise, uh, nothing much happening at my end. And answering your question on anger, um, see, for me also, I think uh, I wouldn't say exactly like you, but uh, I mean, I, I mean, I do get angry, but for me, it just like comes and goes. So it's very rare that I internalize it and like stew on it or, you know, uh, but there have been a couple of cases, even in the recent past, you know, where a loved one has been hurt. So, you know, that was there. Um, so there's, uh, there's something called, uh, 
forgiven forgiveness prayer that was taught to me when I was doing Reiki. So which basically, essentially, in essence, what it says is uh, this was done by a prior agreement. So, you know, we have nothing but un unconditional love for each other. So because certain instances which hurt you uh, are meant to happen that way so that, you know, there is something that comes out of it. Uh, and so it goes, uh, you know, um, just paraphrasing it, it goes something like, uh, uh, like say, um, um, so I have, uh, dear Devin, I have, uh, I mean, I'm sorry if I have hurt you uh, knowingly or unknowingly in this or any other lifetime. I have, I know this was done by prior agreement. So I have nothing but un un unconditional love for you and then you repeat the same thing like you know you know uh, you know i'm letting go of uh, uh, any hurt or pain that you have you may have caused me knowingly or unknowingly in this or any other lifetime um as, as, and i know this was done by prior agreement and i have nothing but un un unconditional love for you this one and also but thing is uh, uh, i had one but there are times like it's not like i say it once and it, it's a mantra and then you know it vanishes sometimes you know it is uh, the hurt is a lot so um i cord cutting also helped me a lot with that you know cord cutting to that incident helped me a lot and uh also recently um uh we had to settle like a, a land dispute between uh my dad and his like you know brother's uh family so obviously we both of us felt like you know um uh, you know we are being shortchanged or whatever so um so I so when we went in for the discussion because my parents are um, old and I didn't my sister and I decided they had enough of this stress over the years. So, uh, but the uh, interesting thing about my dad's family is like you know um, outside this we are all very close. So you know when it comes to our relationship, there's uh, there's an effect. So when we went in for the discussion, my sister and I like especially me, I went with the mindset that you know we are all still you know relationship matters etc but then when the first round of discussion went I didn't feel that it was reciprocated so I felt like extremely hurt but my sister went prepared so she wasn't but then you know uh, I was feeling very hurt so coincidentally I was doing this um, uh, six step meditation six phase meditation of Vishen Lakhyanis around the same time and there is a, a part of the meditation is also about forgiving somebody so in that it's almost like he talks about um, understanding where they are coming from. So, um, so when I worked on that, I was able to release all that. Uh, I mean, I was more more upset with my cousin because I had a good relationship. I still have a good relationship with him. So, uh, so when I understood, so it was more about me telling myself that he he also comes from a place where he wants to protect uh, his parent, and you know, right. and that's why. So that really helped a lot. That was a recent one, which was deep rooted. But otherwise, I'm like you. It's like it just I do get angry more often than you do, probably. But for me, it just like lasts for a minute at max, and then it's all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, that's so. great. Thank you for sharing that. And for those of you who don't know, um, Ruby is not only a Reiki master but also an animal communicator. And she and I have an agreement that our animals can contact each other, even though we live in different countries. I don't know if you want me to say where you're located. Yeah, <laughs> um, <that's okay. laughs> yeah she, well, Ruby lives in Dubai. I'm in Texas. And uh, for years, um, her dog, Brad, or has contacted me occasionally. And my cats will contact her, especially my cat, Max, my mm -hmm. youngest daughter. And I'm working on a story time for this, Ruby. I just, it's been so much lately, but I want to share more of the details, but I'll just give you a little teaser. Uh, Max let Ruby know as she was going into a healing session that there was something dangerous at my house here in Texas that needed to be addressed. And I still get choked up thinking about it because Ruby texted me immediately from Dubai and I followed the directions given by Max and I did find something dangerous actually everything he mentioned was accurate to the location. So I will share more about that later, but it's a really, really cool thing to think about the way that we all come together and we connect in this way, no matter where we are on the planet, we are holding space for each other energetically. We are meant to be doing this work together. We are all here right now, listening to this coffee now or later, because we agreed 
we had a sole contract to come here at this time and work together. So uh, more on that to come, but I just had to give another shout out to you, Ruby, because that was so incredibly helpful. And just, it's always amazing to get that validation. Ruby has never been to my home. She doesn't know what any of it looks like. So she had to rely on what Max was sharing with her. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ruby. That was great. Yeah, thank Did you, you have yeah. anything else you wanted to share before we moved no, on? I just like, I, again, you know, I feel so privileged that Max chooses to connect with me. Yeah. So last time he woke me up from a dream, <laughs> he came in my dream at 2.30 a.m. That's woke. right. <laughs> so, this time, at least it was 4.30 in the evening. So <laughs> so at least, yeah, he waited for a better time. I'll have to, <laughs> well, I'll have to look at my notes from that one. It, maybe we can pull that into the story too. But uh, <laughs> you guys have a really strong connection. I'm really grateful yeah. for it. It's been very helpful. Well, thank so you. thank you, Ruby. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Next on the screen I see is Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Always great to have you here. What's going on with you? I don't, uh... Well, you know everything that's going on with me. Do you know anything that I should share? Well, are you uh, having time to do the challenge? Have you done the cha journaling challenge? No, not yet. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no. Well, I just wanted I've to hear how it was so going for you. I've other things come through. I've just had to put it on pause because I've just had so much. It has been so busy. Everybody. No, no. This is downloads coming through. Oh, okay. Yeah. So downloads coming through. It's like, I got a, I'm drinking from a fire hose right now. Right. Right. Um, those of you who are with me physically, I've told that I've started in my journal putting, when I get a download that is not from me or not from my higher self, but I feel that it's from an angel, God, the divine. I, I'm not, I'm not good at distinguishing yet, but not me. I started writing it in red so that I could easily go back and find it so that it doesn't just become a part of my journal. And then the other day I got a download and it was like, okay, this feels different. I think, I think this is from my higher self. So then I started putting, writing that in pink because it had a different energy to it. It didn't feel like it was from a separate, and I know there is no separation, but a different kind of being, it really felt like it was from me. Um, so I started writing that in pink, which means that truly my journal looks like somebody threw up all over it <laughs> um, in different colors. It's but pretty. I will, I will tell you, I got one download from the divine not for me on thursday september the 8th and what is today today is the 14th, 14th. Mm -hmm. on the 13th i managed to not heed it not heed h-e-e-d it and man it came back right away and i don't want to say hit me in the face because it wasn't that's not how it works and that's not how it happened but I did something in in good measure with pro, coming from the right place but not heeding the counsel and it was the wrong thing to do and I thought oh man if I had heeded the counsel I wouldn't have said what I said which wasn't bad but it had a bad effect because I didn't hit heed the counsel and so I went back and said Okay, I guess when I hear these things and I write them down, it's not just about writing them down, it's about heeding them. So are you comfortable sharing what the what the advice was? Yes. Okay. And it's the one that you liked, actually. Um, oh, yeah. The headline is don't interfere. For those of you who know me, and I see Ruby smiling, because even though um, <laughs> we've never met in person, you will know this about me. Donna's known me my, forever, so she knows this. In your exuberance to share your spiritual insights, be careful not to push anyone's pace. For in so doing, it might disrupt the current order of their life or their journey. Souls need to find their own pace. So 
I was in meditation yesterday. So that, that was the advice. That was the council on September the 8th. And yesterday I was in meditation and I got a little vision. And I thought to share it with one of my best friends. And without asking the angels, is this the right thing to share, the right time to share, or am I in my ego exuberance? And I picked up the phone right away and I called my friend, Karen, and I just went, oh my God. And she got real quiet and basically said, okay, I got to go now. I went, so I thought, oh, I wonder, oh. And I went back to my journal and I went, so she called me and she said, she called about 20 minutes later. I'm so grateful for people in my life who right away say, I'm looking straight at you, Donna, who will say, hey, this is what I felt about that. Or this is how I'm feeling. I've got great friends who have feeling. Anyway, she called me back and she said, I just want to share that that didn't, that didn't hit me right. And I was like, I had a feeling, oops. And she said, but I've got to figure out why it triggered me. So it set her on a good pace to figure out why what I said triggered her. But I think I pushed her pace, which is exactly what the angel said not to do. And it all worked out fine. It was a very gentle, thank you for the gentle reminders to heed the advice when it comes. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kelly. That was a, that was a great share. I think that can help all of us so much. And this reiterates why I'm so passionate about teaching others to do this themselves, to track the way they're getting information, because it really is you experiencing it. I believe that really we all are ultimately are our own inner authority. It comes down to only I know if I'm getting true divine guidance. You can tell me something until you're blue in the face. And if I'm not ready to hear it, it doesn't matter how good the guidance is. It's me experiencing it. It's me feeling it and seeing it. And so that was a great example. And I love that beautiful download you got. It was so, so wonderful because it is true that we get excited to share our light. We get excited to say, why doesn't everybody want to live like this? <laughs> you know, it, why, why doesn't everybody just want to have a divinely guided life and just live in love and walk in the light? And, and really some people, they just haven't gotten there yet and they have to have their own realization. And it's a constant unveiling, right? We're always doing the work. We're always doing that. But sometimes we encounter somebody that's not quite as far down the exploration path as we are, but they seem as enthusiastic. So we want to grab their hand and say, come with me. And they're just not ready for that. So I thought that was a really, really great thing to share with all of us and a good reminder for all of us who do this work, right. To just trust that when it, the timing is right, you know, maybe something you said planted a seed and a few weeks from now that will open up and grow. And though there will be that aha moment for that person. So really great. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing that. Did you have anything else you wanted to share? Wonderful. Okay, great. Well, thank you again for being here. Always appreciate it seeing you. Holly, you're next on the screen. How are you, Holly? So good to see you. I'm so good. Thank you. It's good to see you guys as well. Um, so I think I might have shared my anger story with you guys. I don't remember. I'm okay. not I'm not typically tell us one. again. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I'm not typically one that carries anger. I'm not, I'm somebody that if I'm upset with somebody, I tell them right away. So I'm not carrying that. So it's not, you know, like sitting in my body. So, um, a few months ago it had to deal with my daughter and it's somebody that had done her wrong and there's nothing I can do. And I have issues with control things. So <laughs> I will admit that. Um, so I, I was just sitting in this anger and I didn't know what to do with it or where to place it. And I decided to channel it into helping this person 
get through things. Like I'm realizing that the reactions um, have to do with their own, they need healing. So as a healer, what can I do? I can attempt to help heal this person. And everybody was shocked that I would do this because I had so many reasons to be angry with this person, but this is somebody that I'm going to have to deal with in my life for a very long time. So that was my solution was to attempt to help this person. I think it stems from being a middle school teacher and seeing those students that act out and you just know that it's not me. It's, you know, there's Mm -hmm. so much going on in their life behind the scenes that it, again, it comes down to that healing and that, you know, wounded child kind of thing. So that was one way that really helped me. You know, I was feeling like I was actually doing something about it and it, it has helped a lot. Um, that's a great, great tool and, and seeing where they're coming from so that you can step out of it. Uh, reminds me of the, the guidance from the angel messages at the beginning about separation. Um, it's kind of standing outside of it and not allowing yourself to be part of it. Right. Um, and then the way you do that is with the light and healing. So beautiful, yes. beautiful story. Thank, Thank you, you for you. sharing that. And what then else? the other thing I'm proud of myself because I work at home now and I work all the time. Like I have Sunday and Mondays off. And Sundays I do my lives on TikTok and Monday I do my videos for YouTube. So it's like, I never have days off anymore. Right. So I scheduled time to paint today. Like that is something I need to do. So I just, I have to schedule it. Otherwise I'm just going to find other ways to work. So (laughs) yes, yes. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Holly, she's an amazing tarot reader and she has a great channel on TikTok. What's your handle, Holly? Heal with Holly. Heal with Holly. Um, I love getting her a forecast for the week. So helpful. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with you. And that's a guidance I've been getting a lot lately for myself and for some of the other uh, work I'm doing is that work-life balance can be challenging for those of us doing this kind of work. We're, we're so fueled by the love for what we do. We're so fueled by what we're doing. And we do have to make sure we're taking time for our family and our loved ones. And of course ourselves, so we can enjoy the moment. And, uh, I, I, I can totally relate to that. Now, do you paint, you're saying like paint a room in your house or like, are you an artist as well? Oh, I'm an artist as well. Um, okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so really getting some intuitive downloads doing it that way. Yes. I was going to be an art teacher actually when I started school, but that changed because I didn't think I was going to get a job. I kept hearing, you know, they're getting rid of art teachers. So I went to math, you know, that right, left brain. <laughs> I was about to say that's beautiful. You were able to tap into both there. So no wonder you're a light worker. That's beautiful. But today, that. one of my friends, um, I usually do acrylic and he does watercolor. And I struggle with watercolor because again, I have control issues. So, um, so today I'm going to do watercolor. So, oh, okay. So now you're doing work on yourself while you're creative. I love that. Yes. (laughs) Working on my control issues through watercolor. Beautiful. That could be a YouTube series, Holly. (laughs) (laughs) So I love that. All right. Well, did you have anything else you wanted to share with the group as far as what's been going on for you or anything? No, that's, that's about all. I don't want to take up everybody's time too much, but I just wanted to share those things today. I really appreciate it. That's what I love is we can all learn from each other and also know that we all experience these things. We're not alone. You know, we can work very hard on ourselves to stay in alignment and stay balanced, but some energy comes through and knocks us over you know, it's okay. That's, you know, and so that was another one of the messages. If you came in late was don't be too hard on yourself. If you have said something that you wish you hadn't said, or you have had an outburst, um, just try to figure out the source of it and do some things to help yourself, help yourself get back into balance. I think can be really helpful. So yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that Holly and great to see you as always. Um, Melanie, you're next on the screen. How are you doing? How are, have the, the things been going for you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, I'm always like unprepared when you, when you call my name. There's um, no need to be prepared. Oh, there we <laughs> go. Time. 
I'm enjoying everybody's stories um, so much. And Kelly, I have a very like similar, but like much like less involved and, and less interesting message in some ways than the one that you got. Um, but I, one day I was meditating and I got them, I'd been feeling like a little bit rough, but I wasn't sure why. And I got the message during meditation to just drink lots of water. And then later in the day tested positive for COVID. And so that felt really validating to like, cause that feels very, that feels like a good solution sort of to having COVID is to drink a lot of water, but it is, it was important. And it just felt really nice to have um, a more concrete piece of information and to follow it. And so that was, that was kind of cool. Um, but I've been trying to work on this balance thing, which it sounds like everybody is trying to work on. Um, I've just returned to being in the classroom and it is more draining than it's ever been before. And I don't know if that's like the energy of other people or whatever it is. Um, and so I'm just trying to find my footing with all of that. Cause it's hard. Like I, other times I've talked about this idea of wanting to transition out of uh, teaching, but that requires that I'm not exhausted when I'm not teaching because I can't transition into the next thing. Um, but that that's that's what I'm working on. If anyone has any great solutions, I think the solution is just to rest. I think that's probably what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not great with that. So you're feeling like you want to work on things kind of on the side that would let you transition, but then you're too tired. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Like it took me about 24 hours. I teach at a university, so it's, I'm not teaching eight hours a day or anything, but I taught a class and then 24 hours of being like exhausted. And then it's like, Oh, right. now you get to go back and do it again. And I'm like, okay. But like, it's very hard to transition out without more time or energy. Oh, I, I can totally relate to that. And I, and yeah, thank you for sharing that. I definitely want to hear if anybody in the group has suggestions. I, for me, usually when that happens, I have to go back to the drawing board and look at where I can restructure my preparation. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've definitely had to do that lately with some of my projects is, you know, and we're in that energy right now that's helpful for that with the Mercury retrograde is review, reorganize, remap. Uh, I'll go back and say, you know, where am I maybe wasting my efforts? It's not being received by the other person or by the student um, mm -hmm. so maybe start from that standpoint, is there anything that you might be able to restructure in your preparation so that you're showing up a little more rested? Um, mm -hmm. but then also one thing that I will do is I will schedule something really fun or something just for me right after a big, mm -hmm. you know, share like that, so to speak. Um, and so like one thing, my husband and I love to sit and play games together, so we usually schedule that at the end of our day when we're both done working, we'll sit down with no electronics in front of us and, and visit and play a game. And I have that at the end of my day to just relax. I don't have to think about the things I didn't get done that day or the things I should have you know, done differently. And I get, I really hold space for that recovery after a big you know, exertion of energy. So I think you're on the right track about rest. I think- Probably also another thing I'm getting is you might be chastising yourself that it's not, you're not moving along faster than you are with the project too. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I think we all face too, when we know we have these skills to do something else and we, we love the other thing we want to do, we feel like we should have all the energy in the world and ultimately our mind and our body needs the rest in order for us to do it. So um, does anybody have anything they could share with how they do that? Holly, I see you're there. I just, um, I feel like you, I don't know if you do shielding, but I feel like you should do shielding as well. I feel like people are very easily able to take your energy. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest looking into that or, you know, just consciously doing that before you teach. Uh, also at the end of every day, what I do is I release any energies that are not of my highest and best good and lovingly send them back to where they belong. And then I call back all of my energy given without my knowledge or permission. I like do that every single night, just as wow. it's kind of like my prayers before bed as a way of, you know, 
protecting my energy. And I feel like you might notice a difference as well. So and do you have so, uh, something you say a prayer or an affirmation that you're doing to call your energy back? Yes. I will just say, I call back any energy that was given without my knowledge or permission to any being on any timeline throughout any dimension. I call that energy back to me now. So I, can I ask a question of Holly? I've, I've never heard, I don't think I've ever heard it put quite like that. I've heard attaching to my energy and cord cutting, but I've never heard taking my energy. And that really resonates with a, mm -hmm. a mental thought that I've had before, but not worded like that. Could you explain that a little bit more taking my energy? Well, you know, it, when you, especially if you work in the public or, you know, with students, especially, I mean, there are people that are taking energy from you without your knowledge. Most what of do the they do with it? Um, a lot of times it's to use for them, especially when you're a light worker, people are attracted to that. So they want to be around you. They may not even understand why they want to be around you, but it's because you have that energy that they need. So, um, and for me during Reiki as well, I always make sure, you know, like if I'm touching them, especially that's an exchange of energy as well. So, um, and that was just kind of a method that I picked up along the way and kind of fine tuned. The other night I did a suggestion that I had heard on TikTok about when you call it back, you ask for it to be cleansed and amplified. <laughs> But I decided I can't do that at night because my my body oh, was yeah. literally vibrating. Yes, I know <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're not amplifying it anymore. Not, not before, before bed. bed. Yeah, I, I I love that. That is so good. Um, you know, that reminds me of another one I'll do is I put it in a capsule, the work I'm doing. So for example, if I'm posting a video on social media, that would be a visual of where somebody's taking my energy because they're just going along swiping and they see me talking on their phone. Okay. That's not intentional. They're not, you know, the, I put that video up there. I put that out there, but once I post it or, you know, once I see that it's on there, I will cut cords with it and picture it in a capsule so that the energy can stay in the post. You know, I want people to get what I put in that post or that video I want them to get everything out of it that I put into it, but I also don't want it to, like you said, Holly, continue on and um, until I'm ready for the next post. So if you could, you could even visualize your class as a time capsule that, you know, that way the students, when they're studying and they're remembering something you said, it's not pulling on you. It's pulling on what they learned in that time capsule, if that makes sense. Holly, so. would you put that I don't want to call it a prayer, but that calling back of your energy. Sure. Are you on uh, Facebook? Are you in Coffee with Devin? Yes. Would you post it in there? Sure. Because if you post it here and I don't grab it fast enough, it disappears. Yeah. But if you put it in coffee, it won't disappear. And other people who weren't here will benefit from it. I, that really, and of course, I guess now that you mention it, that's what an energy vampire is. But I just hadn't thought of it as somebody taking my energy. Wow, I like it. I want to call it back, but I need you to write it down for me, please. <laughs> yes, I will do that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and it's a good reminder that it's not always intentional. I mean, it's not like they're trying to be an energy vampire, but it's just the nature of you shining your light out there and they're in it. So in soaking it up, right? So, oh, I see another, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see. Nancy, Nancy's raising her hand. Hi, Nancy. Hi, this is my first time joining. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you very much. And everything is resonating so much, but um, another tool I use is crystals to carry with me. <laughs> yeah, pocket so, crystals. Pocket crystals, um, things like that. And just as far as, um, people taking energy or being attracted to you. It's, I did teach for 25 years, but I um, like to say I've changed lanes. I haven't retired, but, um, but just walking into the grocery store, you can, you know, any public space and people are attracted to you. If people strike up a conversation with you, with the person, the clerk who's checking you out, all those things, it's all those energy exchanges that can be exhausting. Mm -hmm. And then 
you wonder why you can't function at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you, Nancy. I saw a post. Um, I think Jessica's on here, but she's not. Uh, her video is not on. So I'll just say, give you credit, Jessica. She sent me a post when we were doing back to school preparation. We have girls the same age. And uh, she it was somebody had posted which crystals do you put in your kid's backpack? And it was like back to school shopping for crystals. And I was like, that is brilliant. <laughs> Let's get one for each chakra plus a protection, <laughs> you know? So yeah, thank you for that reminder. Yeah. That's like, I, and whatever, I that. and whatever your children gravitate to, like put them, put them in a bowl and let them just pick. That's so true. Right. And they, and, they um, find them. They, yeah, and it's so fun. Yeah, exactly. It so. is really fun. And I, um, I, I've always done that in on like airplanes and stuff, airports, there's so much energy that comes in and out. I'll put them in my bags and in my pockets. And, um, yeah, so that, thank you. That's a great one there. You're welcome. So, Melanie, do you have any comments on that or just, I you? mean, thank you everyone. It's funny because I have been told that before and I've always been really resistant to doing the work. <laughs> So I'm going to, I'm going to do it now because, um, yeah, that it just sounds so good. And it's funny that you mentioned the grocery store. Cause this all started for me going to, cause I was like, I need granola bars before I can go teach. And I went to a grocery store and it was full and it just like, it was the weirdest experience I've ever had. I like walked into my house and threw up my back without even doing anything. And I was like, what is happening? Uh... And I think it's this, I need to, I need to protect myself. So I'm going to start doing that. Right. So right. I mean, it really is so crucial that we protect our energy when we're doing this work. I mean, even if it's not something you do to support yourself with income, you're doing the work because you're here. Mm -hmm. So then we have to do the work like brushing our teeth to keep our teeth healthy. We have to do the work to keep our energy healthy and protected. And, um, it's with practice, it's faster and it becomes automatic. So don't feel like you're adding now I got to add four more things I got to do every day. <laughs> you know, um, I would maybe even start with just one thing first. Maybe the first thing you do is get the crystals. Cause it's something you can put in your bag and put places in your car where it's just always with you and start with that and see how you feel and then add something else. But, um, I just, I always like to use the reminder that when you're in the shower, cleaning your physical body, why not do your cord cutting there? Cause you clean your energy too. And you have the visualization of the water mm -hmm. flowing and rinsing your energy there. Um, so I'll picture golden light coming out of my shower head and down through my crown chakra and, you know, whatever visualizations it works for you. The more you practice, the easier it gets. I used to use an energetic bubble, but then when my friend Tracy Day, who a lot of y'all know on here, um, taught me the pyramid method, I had to practice that one, visualizing putting myself in a pyramid, what it looks like, what the sides look like, filling it with light. That's a little bit more work. And it, I resisted for a long time, ch changing from an energetic bubble to a pyramid uh, but once she pointed out that bubbles can be popped more easily, <laughs> pyramids are the strongest structure on the earth. I thought, all right, it's time for me to do the work. And now I can pyramid myself like that. And my kids, I can do it for me and people around me pretty quickly, but it just takes that visualization practice. So, um, at, back to Kelly talking about drinking from the fire hose. Don't worry. You're, you're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. You're showing up. And so it'll, it'll evolve one step at a time for you. So yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. That's a good reminder for everybody. Thank you so much. All right. Let's move on to Donna. Hi, Donna. Thanks for being here. Muted there. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Good to be here. Um, well, uh, I did the five day challenge and okay, wonderful. loved it. Yes. I okay. really enjoyed it. Um, this is uh, Devin's five day angel challenge. And uh, a couple of things that I really appreciated about it was that it's kind of a structure. So like each day there's a, a, a message from the angels. And then, you know, at the end of the day, then you, um, think back and, and notice what spoke to you and how it, it relates to the message. And so uh, I really enjoyed doing that. It was a little challenge. So I, yeah, I appreciated that. And then I, I um, at the end, I looked for a themes 
to see if there was some basic theme that I was getting uh, because I would I would uh, read the the message and then meditate on it and do some automatic writing. So basically, what I the message that I got was I'm doing too much left brain stuff and I need to be more right brained, and okay. which is a little unusual for me because I think of myself as being more right brained. I probably am, but I mix it up too much with the left. So anyway, it was it was very good. I appreciate oh, I'm so it. I'm grateful to hear that it was valuable to you. Yeah. It was very, I, yeah, I would I would encourage everybody to do it. Um, doesn't take much time, so it's 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 good. Well, I know how busy everybody is. And initially I was gonna create a 30 day challenge. <laughs> and every time I, I yeah. talked to somebody, they were like, 30 days? <laughs> and I was like, Well, I really do want you guys to have a bite sized idea of how I use the method I teach for tracking your intuition. So I'm really yeah. grateful to hear that. And I want to do more of those things to help you all have tools to learn how you use your intuition or you already know how you use it just getting back in the habit because we all um we all fall out of the habit i was doing another show i do for serious joy called angels aligning um that that releases on sundays and i was doing the recording for this upcoming week and so many messages were coming through for me about i had let part of my routine my daily spiritual routine fall away which was 10 minutes of learning every day. And I used to be so good about sitting down with my favorite topic and spending at least 10 minutes learning about it. And I got so busy with other work projects. I was like, oh, I got to get to work. I don't have time for that. And the message was, uh, 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 <laughs> get back on track. We got to keep growing. So yeah, um, yeah, really, really grateful to hear that. What else has been going on with you, Donna? Well, uh, I want to comment on on your question about anger. Mm -hmm. um, I do get annoyed easily, but you know, then I get over that. And I'm, you know, people I live with. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've noticed that, you know, the past um, few weeks that I'm really angry at just people in general, and I'm I'm kind of embarrassed to say that, but. Um, um, I, I have very little patience with things like um, using too many resources and being mean to animals. And um, I, I did, I volunteered to, uh, to work with this group that picks up trash in the San Antonio rivers. And so I worked this past Sunday and I was just angry a lot of the time because there's plastic everywhere. Yeah. Oh, did you freeze? <laughs> so I've been thinking about how I need to turn that around because it just doesn't help being so angry. So I, I just need to find more ways to uh, counter that with something physical, uh, you know, doing more with dog rescues and doing more to help the environment. So. Well, and Donna, this is this is a good circle back to shielding. So when you're do when you're seeing these things that feel so disrespectful to Earth and the rest of the creatures here, um, you're also picking up on the energy of the person who was willing to be destructive, willing to litter or not care about resources. So you have to again that word separation coming up separate yourself from that and not take on the energy that's in that. Right. And I know that's, that's hard to do when you see it. Um, but it is kind of like making the choice to not take on the energy can be really helpful with that. The other thing is, um, when we worry about resources, it, it first of all, the news headlines, this is where we need to watch what we're consuming. We need to make sure, and I'm not talking about with littering or waste, I'm talking about just all the fear mongering we see in the media and the news. Be very careful not to get lost in that spiral of the news headlines. This is where they're talking again about separation and balance. If you're hearing about how this location is about to run out of water, mm -hmm. um, and catch your thoughts. Are your thoughts saying, oh my gosh, are we about to run out of water? And what are those people going to do if they run out of water? Catch that, try to separate yourself and instead go into a place of abundance, go somewhere 
where you can maybe sit out on your lawn in your grass and look at all the grass blades and then say a prayer for the water to come to those people who need it and to protect our water supply, that kind of thing. That can really help you with releasing that because that's, again, that reminder that the ultimate way for us to help someone, you know, maybe on the other side of the world is to work on ourselves um, because otherwise we could be accidentally pulling on their energy by worrying. And that's one thing that I think gets lost in a lot of the kind of basic uh, intuitive things you see out there. People forget to mention that when you worry about somebody, you're actually could be pulling on their energy instead of it being, oh, but I'm, I'm sending them love and I'm saying prayers and, and I'm doing things to help them. Okay. That's different than oh, I'm so worried about my friend and I don't know if they're going to be able to um, get through this. So that's, yeah. you know, something to keep in mind there when you're feeling drained in that way, you know, how can you separate yourself from that energy and go do something more impactful, like you said? So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot. That was real helpful. Thank you for sharing that. That's a good reminder for all of us. Um, oh, Nancy, it looks like Nancy had to hop off. I'm sorry, Nancy, if you had anything else you wanted to add, I hope we get to see you next time or feel free to put your message in the group. I see and the next person, is it Casey? Um, your, your, um, name down there. I'm not sure how you, how to, um, pull you up on the screen. I'm sorry. I can't see this very well, but yes, the next person on the list is Casey ULC. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sorry. Hi. It's, sorry, I. I it's uh, my name. I'm on a different device. Sorry, my name's oh, Christy. I got you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Hi. How are you doing? I, I I'm sorry. I I couldn't read the letters when they're so far away. So. No, nope, it's my bad. It's my bad. <laughs> sorry. How about are you that. doing? I'm great, and um, I just want to thank everybody. All of this has been really, really great information, because the only the thing that I was going through is the thing that everybody's already talked about anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Which well, is the feel whole shielding have to mm -hmm. do that in a better way. So thanks. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that that's that thing that agro energy, right? It's, uh, we've got Mars and Gemini, so we're going to see it everywhere and we're going to feel it. And um, with those around us doing it. So that's why I thought it would be a good topic. It was a friend that asked a question, asked the question about it. And I thought, what a great thing for us all to share because we all experience it from time to time. And then we also all have people around us experiencing it and they don't even realize it. They're not even acknowledging that they're angry. Um, and that can be dangerous, right? To ourselves to stuff it down. It blocks us from manifesting. It blocks us from healing. And so sometimes I think the first thing is to just address the fact that, you know what, I freaking feel angry right now. I'm, I'm angry. Um, but then again, also acknowledging that you don't have to stay in that anger. It's just for the moment it's passing. And then maybe understanding the root cause of the anger. Is it out of love or is it out of fear? And, and then working your way through the path that way, it's kind of like picturing the fist that you shake because you're so angry. And then slowly you relax your fist and open your hands and then the anger's released. So, um, so good, good reminder for all of us. Did you have anything else you wanted to share or ask? Before you nope. Thanks guys. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for being here. Good to see you again. Um, Tracy, are you, I can't see if you're wanting to share. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm here. Um, it's good to see you too. I'm, I'm my energetic self today, as you can see, I'm pixelated. So my, <laughs> I love it. Going up this way. So this is what I look like in energy form, I guess. Right. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, anger. So very interesting. Um, I think for me, the first thing I, I experienced something that was quite interesting. I was happy. Came out of the bedroom this, in the morning. Everything was good. And then just was angry and cross. And then I had to go off to the gym and I was like, what the hell was that all about? So for me, my suggestion would be when you do feel anger, first check if it's you. Because it could be someone else. Yes. 
Very true. And I was actually, when I did three hours work of energetic work, I discovered that I was jumped. And the anger that was coming out that felt, you know, from my inside going, what the hell's going on? Why are we angry? What's happening? You know, mm -hmm. and, and meanwhile, the external is yelling and being upset about something. And the internal part was like, I have no idea why we're yelling. Do you know why we're yelling? And, and the whole inner conversation was going on. And, and so I was like, okay. So I did some energetic work and I was discovered, it, I discovered that I was jumped by an external entity, someone that I had known, someone who was no longer with us. And all these things that came up with this person that, and it wasn't they were jumping me in a negative way, it's just they knew me and they could see my light. They knew I could help them heal and then move on. This person has been passed for 25 years. And when I, I was quite in shock, actually, I went through the whole process of healing, you know, anti-positive morphic fields, flipping them to positive morphic fields, um, uh, projected thought forms were, you know, happening to me, energetic toxins and weapons were being thrown at me through this person. Um, Entity attachment, um, entity interference, entity weapons, and um, things of that nature, and ex other portals. So all of a sudden, I've got two portals, all this stuff coming at me going, okay, one at a time, folks, one at a time. So I just kind of went through the process of flipping the energy, healing stuff. The first thing I did after identifying that this was not my anger is I put myself now in an octahedron, which is basically two pyramids, kind of like on top. And, you know, with the, the proper material made that's best for my highest and greater good in all the timelines and all dimensions and everything where I exist. And so I, I did that and went through all of it and healed everything. And I, I asked just for clarification, because now that this had happened and I had the realization I said, like, wait a minute, I've had this happen before, I think. Mm. So I asked divine, you know, through divine muscle testing, how many times has this being jumped me over the past 25 years? And I got over a hundred times. Wow. So, so that could explain some things you've had to face then, I guess. Exactly. So I guess with regards to anger, yeah, it can be a motivator. But just first check to see if That's it's even more anger. That's a good point to bring up. That's so true because <laughs> every one of us here, we're here because we are natural empaths. Right. And a lot of us have not even gone through so much of our life without even realizing that we were taking on other people's, you know, emotions, not even realizing it. And, All of uh, it. So you know, yeah, as, that's, that's and as crazy. Holly said, you know, taking our energy, things of that nature. So I, I shield every day after I do, you know, my morning routine, uh, cutting cords, and then I shield. I put myself in an octahedron with, that has like a crystal stone cap. Um, I do call back en energy that has been taken that I was not aware of, um, and I think that. Um, I like what, what Kelly said, you know, about her download, about timing and don't push others' pace. You know, we get so excited when we get a download and then the light bulb goes off. You know, like, oh my God, that's so exciting. I got to tell everybody I know. We got to do this. Right from the mountaintops. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, so I, I am also guilty of that exuberance from time to time. So it's being using discernment, how you how you share your enthusiasm about this stuff in the right group, you know, who can appreciate the enthusiasm versus feel like they're being triggered or drinking from a fire or something else, you know, that just right. doesn't fit with them at the right time. Yes. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I've been been working on you know, doing that. And I've, 
I've stepped back a little bit and I'm, I'm kind of at a place where I go, okay, I need to step back in. I've been, you know, fulfilling a dream of 35 years. I've developed my art website and now it's out there and doing that and selling my work now. And it's being re uh, received very well, having lots of sales. So that's good. And my other businesses. So now I need just time to be still. And so normally I'm in Texas with a lot of you and um, in the San Antonio area, but currently for the next two and a half months, I'll be in, I'm in Minnesota now. Okay. And so the pace I can manipulate to just slow down a little bit right. and get into more of a meditative space to, you know, as Kelly said, be in that mind space to get the downloads. Well, yes. that's right in alignment with the messages we got at the beginning about separation and bringing balance in and moving into the Libra energy. That's, that's excellent. And I'm really glad you brought up that point about, you know, trusting that, you know, people will get there when they're meant to get there. And I wanted to add one more thing to that. Cause I, I don't want us to feel discouraged well, you know, how are they going to learn if I don't say these things? This is again, where we could attach an energy to the outcome where we visualize this person going, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You saved me. If you hadn't said that, I don't know where I'd be. And instead trying to get very neutral before we share the information and then just trust that whatever reaction they have is the reaction they have. And then you know, maybe it will benefit them in a week or a month or a year. So it's not that we can't share. It's more right. not expecting an outcome that we think is going to be like this huge shouting from the mountaintops. They're going to join us on the mountaintop shouting. <laughs> you know, so so yeah, that's that's exactly. awesome. well. Exactly. I want to make sure we get to Whitney before we move on. So, did you have anything else you wanted to add, Tracy? Before we have to. Nope. Okay, nope, great. I'm good. And, and I, unfortunately, I do have to go. I had another meeting that started at 11, but I wanted yes, to I know stay. we lose some people as we get to the end of the hour, but I'm grateful yeah. you were here and the recording will be up soon so you can hear anything else. Wonderful. Else. Good to see everyone. Tracy, you too. Bye-bye. Hey, Whitney, I'm so glad you're back. Hi. Yeah. I know you've been so busy. Lots I was going sure. on. Yeah, I wasn't sure I was able to come on because I had like a meeting before this, but if I'm gathering tonight, we're talking about anger. Is that what we're talking about? Well, I, I kind of gave a prompt to the group at the beginning um, that I, I was asked by another coffee joiner. I'm keeping the name anonymous, but how do you let go of anger? And, and, you know, we're not necessarily just talking about the quick little outburst. Like I said at the beginning to my kids, when I say, pick up your shoes, I've told you three times, you know, um, we're talking about the kind of slow burn anger, it's like maybe you don't even realize how deep it is sometimes or, or it affects a loved one. So you're, you don't even know how to begin, you know, letting go of the anger. So that, that was one of them. I was curious if, if, if you, anyone who's doing the journaling prompt. So if you have, I mean, the journaling challenge, if you'd have, I'd love to hear about that. And then just what's going on for you. Anything you want to share? Interesting. Okay. Um, Anger was really like prominent in my life last week um, around the full moon and like leading up to it, mm -hmm. uh, which is really interesting for me because I tend to not like to feel my emotions when they're angry. Um, and so I think I've been working a lot on self-worth and like expecting certain things from people. And when I come across situations that weren't matching that, um, it just kept building up and building up until it like bubbled up and like I couldn't control it. So the anger bursted out. Um, and actually Robbie gave me like uh, a ceremony to do at the last reading that I had with her. And I'd been holding off on doing that. And then after that occurred, I was like, maybe I should just go and do the ceremony thing that she gave me because it felt like the right moment. And it released everything um, that I was feeling. Wow. And it reminded me, oh, <laughs> like I have these tools with me all of the time. I just have to remember to use them. That is so true. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know what you're talking about. And, and ceremony is so beautiful for those things that we forget. You know, humans have been practicing ceremonies for centuries and centuries, but we don't hear about it 
in the day-to-day -day life. We only hear about the wedding ceremony or the graduation ceremony. We don't necessarily hear about the ceremonies that help us heal or help us move to the next phase and or or bring in the energy right so thank you that's a that's a really good reminder there and there's a lot of ways to do it there's a lot of tools out there um robbie hunt couldn't join us today she's so such a great teacher and astrologer for those of you who know her she also offers that she teaches ceremonies and she's helped me with ceremonies as well that have been very, very powerful. So thank you. That's a great reminder too. Sometimes it's just sitting down and taking the time to do that, that could really move things for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think maybe I'll offer this piece of like nugget that she gave me of the difference between ritual and ceremony. Oh yes. Um, I love this. Yes. And that ceremony is like transformational. Right, right. She that's what what Robbie taught me as well. It's transformational and then the ritual is maintaining yeah. the energy. So yeah. when we wake up in the morning and we have our routine to get ourselves in alignment, cut cords, charge our energy with meditation, that's our ritual that we're doing every day. And uh the ceremonies, you know, can be so powerful in making that big shift there. So, yeah, yeah thank you. Well, shout out to Robbie. If she's listening to this later, we're so grateful for everything she contributes to this group and to the world. So thank you. Did anything else you had to add or questions before we wrap up? Um, I haven't started this journaling thing. I would like to, but I'm not sure like yeah. where it is or how to. Access um, so if you just go to the newsletter I sent out today, or you can go to my website, um, it's just a five day challenge to get you started creating your book of evidence where you get a free PDF download and you can either type in, you know, I made it to where it's editable. If you don't want to print it, you can either print it and write on it, or you can, you know, edit it in the document. And basically you'll get a message every morning for five days and you're going to take five minutes to write that message down. Just think about it. And then at the end of the day, take more, five more minutes to see how that message applied to your day. And then kind of look for an overarching theme. It's something if you, I don't know if you were here when Donna was sharing about it, but maybe go back and listen to the recording. She was, she just completed her five days and she was able to see an overarching theme for the guidance, which I think is really what we're trying to do with the reflection is um, not get too focused on all the tiny details, but stand back with hindsight and go, oh, okay, this is what they're asking me to do with this. And then just have that visual there is really what I'm trying to get everyone to do is not view journaling as, as a chore, view it as a tool that's helping you have hindsight, helping you understand the messages you're getting. So yeah, very yeah. helpful. So I'll post it again. I, I think it's on my website. I've got it on some of my platforms, but thank you for the reminder of that. I'm not sure I have it on my homepage yet. So, <laughs> but it does go out in the newsletter. So as long as you're signed up for, if you've got my newsletter this morning, the new link is up for that. There. Okay. Great. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Whitney. I know you're busy. Uh, Kelly had a comment on that. Kelly? Um, I just want to, Devin, I actually just want to pay the teacher a compliment. And you know how sometimes well, you just said this, sometimes we'll hear things and we will get suggestions or guidance and, and we'll think, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, one of the things that you say all the time in regards to journaling is to take the time to go back and review. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because it's mercury and retrograde. Maybe it's because the lesson finally hit the right place in my brain. But for the, but I have been going back and mm -hmm. it is a freaky experience to go back. And so I, I'm starting at January and I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I do get a lot of guidance. I do get a lot. I do. It's like exactly what you say it is completely affirming. And it's so easy to just plow forward and every day you journal every day you put things in there you just keep it but oh my gosh when I stopped and started reading it's like how do I have time to get anything else done they're always <laughs> talking to me oh my god 
So thank you very thank, much. No, thank yeah. you. I had just never, in all the years I've journaled, I don't, I've never gone back and reviewed. It is freaky. It's just so powerful to see the way yes. we're always being guided. The signs are always there coming from all kinds of directions, all different ways. And, you know, when I first started teaching journaling, that's the big resistance is people don't want to spend the time or they don't know what to write. And I'm trying to show with this challenge that it can just literally be three words that you write down. And six months later, when you see those three words, you're going, whoa. I mean, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it because it's happened so many times for me. When I was first trying to learn how to interpret my dreams, I've always had premonition dreams and lucid dreams. And, and I wanted to understand how to use my dreams as a tool. I would write down every single dream I had. Eventually, through the review process, I would be able to decipher the energetic dreams that were just me processing the day or an upsetting program or news headline I'd read right before bed or, or no, this is guidance, or this is a passed away love and one coming through or an ancestor saying, do this now. And the only way that I was able to learn to decipher was through the taking the time to write it down and then reviewing it and going, okay, yeah, that was just kind of a hot mess over there. And that was because I watched too many of that show on Netflix before bed, you know, and this was, okay, this is telling me something here. And you said at the very beginning, if, if y'all came in late, Kelly had a really amazing share. So I encourage you to go listen to the beginning. And you mentioned, you don't know whether it was your higher self or your angel, I get that question a lot. And I think the thing to keep in mind is it doesn't necessarily matter as long as it feels right. I, I think it's important to start to decipher it as you go. But in the beginning, a lot of people go, how do, which angel is talking to me? Or how do I know if it's my guide or my angel or my spirit animal or my higher self or my grandma, you know, that's, it's really the quality of the message we're after right now. We're after the, the energy behind it and it will not be based in fear. You know, if they are caught, if you are getting cautioned or if you're getting a warning or a caution, you won't feel fear right in the moment. That's one of the things that I have learned. If I'm getting a warning, it makes me stop and go, Oh, hello. I was about to pull out in front of that truck and didn't see it, that kind of a thing, but I didn't. And I, and then I feel the fear after what if I hadn't listened to the guidance, right? So if it's coming through in a fear-based thought, I would be really careful to take that as guidance. The guidance comes through subtly. It comes through in love. And if it doesn't come through subtle, you know, it could be, I mean, sometimes you will hear a guide or an angel be like, stop, but you're not in fear when you hear the stop. So you can get a sudden warning or challenge, but you're not already in the fear. So that's another way to think about it. You know, who's, who am I hearing from? You know, is this my mind chattering or is this true guidance? We'll start off with, how does it feel? Does it feel like it's truly in your highest interest to know this information? Or does it feel like gossip or anxiety that your mind is whipping up from a phone call you just got off, you know? So those are some really great ways too to decipher. And I'm, I'm glad you chimed in at the end because I meant to say that earlier. Don't get too worried about that in the beginning, but definitely write it all down so that you can, with, through the review process, see, oh, these are the differences. And that's what I teach in this challenge. And in the journal I released is an intuition tracker. So that you literally are just entering a few words in the date and, you know, and then it's an easy review process because not everybody has time to go read their entire journal since January. So I'm trying to teach you guys structure that makes it easy to review it. And then if you do want to add a little more than what's available in that box, there's more pages for you to go write more and you can just reference it. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And um, I see that we're here at the end. So unless anybody had anything they wanted to wrap up with, I'm going to go ahead and I guess sign off for this month. I just can't tell you how honored I am for you being here, taking time out of, we, I know we're all busy and the energy has been so chaotic. 
So it's my absolute honor to be here with you, to share the angel messages and to learn from you guys as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And keep an eye out. I will be putting this recording up soon, probably YouTube first, and then I'll send a newsletter out. So just make sure you're subscribed to my new YouTube channel if you want it sooner than you get the letter. And other than that, Thank you for being here. I wish you all so much love over the next month. Don't forget you can check in through the Coffee with Devin on the private Facebook group or reach out to me in the comments and or anything. I love hearing from you and I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your month and beginning of October. Thanks. Happy Libra season. <laughs> Bye. Bye.